40 days ago, in our Christian calendar, we celebrated the greatest event the world has ever experienced, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on that Easter Sunday. Every genuine Christian on this planet is living proof of the resurrected and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved by the resurrected and ascended Lord. We are kept moment by moment by the ascended Lord. We live in constant fellowship with the ascended Lord. We are represented before the Father by the ascended Lord. We are forgiven all our sins by the ascended Lord. And we have eternal life waiting for each one of us with the ascended Lord. The four major festivals of the Christian church way back from the earliest times of Christmas, Easter, Ascension, and Whitsun. Some of you probably recognize three out of four of those. Whitsun is an old-fashioned word for Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit to earth from heaven. Whit, sun, meaning white robes. And 10 days after the Ascension, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to us. So in Sunday week, in 10 days time is Pentecost Sunday. Christmas and Easter still keep their supremacy, Pentecost to a lesser degree, but the Ascension has fallen into wide neglect. It used to be a public holiday, you remember that, some years ago. At one period, the House of Commons in Britain adjourned on Ascension Day and stopped working. Uh, but the time came when they decided to work on this holy festival uh, and gave themselves another holiday instead. They decided not to work on that day, gave up work, and they decided to give Derby Day a, a, a day off to attend the horse rating. So times have changed, haven't they? Ascension Day always falls on a Thursday, as it is today, so it's given very little prominence in preaching. But Ascension Day is very, very significant, as Stuart mentioned a little earlier. For 40 days after Jesus Christ rose from the grave on that first Easter Sunday, Jesus remained on earth and ministered to his disciples and many others. Acts chapter 1 verse 3, just one verse from our reading this morning, tells us the following. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we tell that Jesus appeared to Peter and to the 12 disciples and at one stage to 500 people altogether. Jesus proved to the world that he was indeed alive. And after those 40 days, he ascended into heaven. In heaven today, our Lord ministers as our high priest and our advocate, our lawyer, forgiving sins and restoring us when we confess our sins. As the glorified head of the church, Jesus Christ is equipping his people to live for him and serve him in this present world that we're living in. Through the word of God and prayer, he is ministering to us by his spirit and making us more like himself. And of course, he is preparing in heaven a home for his people, for each one of us. Isn't that glorious? So when Jesus Christ had finished his work on earth, he sol solemnly took leave of his disciples and in a manner unparalleled in divine simplicity, he was taken up before their very eyes in a cloud hid, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Um, I like to believe that that cloud was a group of angels, but the Bible doesn't tell us that. Jesus had prepared his disciples for this. Listen to what Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 14, verse 5 to 16. Now I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you even ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I'll tell you the truth. It is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you, the Holy Spirit. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness 
and judgment in regard to sin because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. That's the devil. I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, com comes, he will guide you into all truths. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will, he will bring glory to me by taking from me what is mine and make it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me again. Jesus told his disciples that although he was leaving this, this earth physically, he was doing it so that he could send his Holy Spirit from heaven down to earth. That was a huge reason, one of the reasons for the ascension. And when Jesus was on earth, he was only at one place at a time. We, we know that by reading the Gospels. So it was necessary for him to ascend to heaven and send his Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity, who would indwell all Christians at all time, all over the world. Our comforter, our helper, guide, convictor of our sins, encourager, and who opens our minds to understanding the scriptures. That is an, the incredible presence of God that each one of us Christians enjoy today, all the time. Aren't we a blessed people indeed? Jesus had business to do on, in both worlds. On earth, he had completed his task to pay for our sins on the cross and conquering death by rising again and to show us how to live and to reconcile man to God. Now he is in heaven, having sent his Holy Spirit to us on earth and to reside in him, sorry, to reside in heaven and to negotiate our affairs with the Father. And that's what he's doing at the right hand of God, speaking for us, negotiating everything for us. There are two other accounts of the ascension of Jesus in the Gospels at the end of Mark and also at the end of Luke. Let's briefly look at the final four verses in the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 24, verse 50 to 53. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually in the temple, praising God. It must have been very early in the morning that this happened because there weren't many people around. They hadn't stirred yet or woken up, and there was no crowds. But Jesus led his disciples to the vicinity of Bethany, adjoining the Mount of Olives, in a place uh, he had served much, near the garden where his sufferings began. But his sufferings and sorrow and agonies were now over, and Jesus was about to ascend to a place of pure joy, heaven. Imagine just for a moment something of what our Lord Jesus Christ must have been feeling at that time. As he rose up from the earth, with a massive cloud of angels or whatever it was, normal cloud, we don't know, on, this, on his way to glorious heaven to be with his father, a place he had left 33 earthly years before, to accomplish the greatest act of love ever possible, to reconcile man to God, to open the gates of heaven for you and for me, to enter into eternal life. His work was done. He paid everything necessary for man's sins to be cancelled and forgiven by giving his life and then conquering death by rising from the dead and giving eternal life to whoever accepts his free gift of salvation and, and eternal life. Jesus went from a world of suffering to a world of pure joy. Friends, that's exactly what's in store for you and for me. Christians go from a world of suffering and sorrow and agonies to an indescribable place of pure joy 
and glory with Jesus that's been promised to us. Some of you here this morning may be going through an agony in your life. And we ask, is this what life is all about? Why am I going through this? Where are you, God, when I suffer? And Jesus answered that question. He actually demonstrated the answer in the ascension. It only makes sense if you look at life in the light of eternity. We're here so that we can be prepared and prepare others for eternity. Isn't that good news? It really is. There is eternity waiting for us. And Jesus has done and gone ahead to prepare a place for us. We can rest assured for that and relax in that knowledge. And the last thing that Jesus did before leaving the disciples, verse 50, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Jesus blessed them with authority to continue. The blessing was so full, as it were, that he emptied his hands. You lift up your hands to bless, you empty your hands. And that's what he did to the disciples, to us. God has so much to give his people, so much to give you and me. And those raised hands were the same pierced hands, the same scarred hands, which were nailed to the cross for our sins. And they were the same hands that rescued Peter when sinking in Galilee's waves. The same hands that reach out to you in your sinking situation, in your need, in your loneliness, in our confusions, in everyday life, and which Jesus was blessing them. While he was doing that, he was taken up. And Jesus still blesses today. Jesus still makes intercession for us. He began the blessing on earth and went up into heaven to continue with it. On that ascension day, quietly and by his own power and will, Jesus went up. No chariots of fire, no fuss. He was the Lord from heaven and he knew the way back for my sake and for your sake. We've seen the preparation, Jesus preparing the disciples. We've seen the exaltation, Jesus exalted, raised up to the royal throne, King of kings, Lord of lords. And finally, verse 52 and 53. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. How cheerfully the disciples continued. Then they worshipped him. No tears of farewell here. No confusion. They knew exactly who Jesus was. This was not the close, but the beginning of life. The work which Jesus Christ did on earth was now to be made effective. They would continue as his royal, loyal subjects. They were now living by faith and not by sight, as we do. And they worshipped him. We are here today in the same position as those disciples. And we worship him. Christ deserves adoration from those that receive blessings from him. And every one of us receive blessings day by day by day. And that is why we're here this morning. We're here to appreciate and to worship God. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Do you know what they were doing? They went back to living their lives for Christ. They were simply being faithful. What a tremendous change in these disciples' understanding. After three years, they understood. It often takes a long time to understand, doesn't it? These disciples were now joyful because they were filled with the glory of Jesus Christ. And that's what brings this joy to a believer today, the glory of Jesus Christ. How do we get it? Firstly, by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior, then abiding in Jesus Christ, living in obedience, worshiping God, communicating through prayer, and getting to know Jesus by reading his word. These disciples who witnessed the ascension of Jesus Christ back to heaven were now faithful 
and ready to go out and spread the gospel to carry out Christ's blessing and enjoy God and bring him glory. And that's where we are today until Jesus Christ returns or we meet him in eternity. Do you know the resurrected and ascended Jesus Christ who wants you to be with him in heaven one day and for eternity? Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you that we're here today celebrating this great thing that you did for us, coming to earth for us, for our sake, saving us, dying for us, conquering death, forgiving our sins, and going back to heaven where you are seated there today, our advocate, speaking for us, supporting us, ministering to us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. There's so much we can thank you for, but we are such privileged people. Thank you that we've come to know you through our salvation, through you ministering to us and saving us, helping us. Lord, if there's anyone here today that's not absolutely sure of that, may today, this Ascension Day, be a day where they are literally ascended into heaven, into glory, into eternity one day when you finish with them on earth. But Lord, help us, each one, to know for sure that we are your child, that you are our king, the king of kings. Help anyone here who is not sure to respond. But Lord, for the rest of us, we pray that we would just continue loving you, serving you, being obedient to you, enjoying you, and sharing you by our lives and our words that incredible love that you've given us, that we may share in this loveless world. So Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. We praise you, we worship you, and we love you. We pray that in the great name of the Lord Jesus Christ, risen and now in heaven. Amen. <laughs>